So this is a tutorial I tried to record once already and I actually did the full thing. I did a full 40 minute tutorial. I kind of wish I realized my mistake to begin with because then I wouldn't have had to do that time investment. But that being said, I realized that there was a mistake the last time I did it and I'm not gonna peddle false information uh, like some of the others. I don't even know who I'm referencing. Either way, um, as I've been talking about nonsense, uh, you, you've been seeing this render. Uh, that's what we're gonna be making today. And the reason for this is somebody summoned me over on the Blender subreddit. Somebody apparently made this result uh, manually and with a bit of animation nodes. Point being, it's not fully procedural and it wasn't made with geometry nodes. That's where I step in. That, that, that's my role. I just take things that could have been made. I'm like, I, I just do it in geometry notes. But there is a benefit to this because if we were to make it procedural, then we can control the resolution of the subdivision and stuff like this. So either way, let's get into it. I'm using Blender 3.1 Alpha. Feel free to use 3.0. I'm not going to come to your house and slap you silly uh, if you do. I don't mind. So geometry nodes. Let's do it. Take the cube take it and make it a geo nodes thing so that the cube has a geometry nodes modifier applied described by this node group hopefully you understand the basics by now now if we think about what it is that we're trying to make here we kind of need to have a cube composed of cubes some of which are even further subdivided and then after we do that construction we need some way to kind of transition in and out so it kind of disintegrates or reintegrates materializes either way Step one of this process is somehow taking a cube and making it out of cubes, which isn't as easy as you think. Uh, it wouldn't be a big deal if there was a distribute volume node, but no, there's just distribute points on faces. So here's how we're going to do it. Take a grid and you're thinking, why a grid? And calm down. There's a reason. So take a grid. Also take a mesh line, and we're gonna be using these two primitives to create this kind of volumetric distribution that we want, okay? Because like, let's say we want a cube composed out of a three by three by three, so 27 cubes. Well, you can think of that as a layer of three by three, and then another, and then another. So I'm thinking about this as kind of planes. In other words, I'm gonna take a grid and instance it across this line. What am I talking about? Well, let's see. I'm gonna instance on points, what are we going to instance? Well, we're going to take the line and all the vertices that make it up. And on each of those, I want a layer or a grid. What does that look like? It looks like this. So you can see how this is in some sense a volumetric distribution. It's very lopsided in this case. I want it to be kind of squished down to a cube, not like this penis monument that we can make uh, taller and shorter. I want it to be a cube, but we're, we're getting somewhere. Um, in fact, because we know it's a cube, it's always going to be like a 3 by 3 by 3 or a 5 by 5 by 5 or an X cubed kind of thing. In other words, I want to make sure that this number, the number of points on our line, whether it be 3, 4, 5, whatever, I want that to be the same as our like resolution per grid. In other words, you can see there's three dependencies on this number because it's a cubed kind of relationship, okay? So you can see this is kind of looking a bit more like a cube. If I go to wireframe, you can actually see this is composed of, it looks like a two by two panel, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, say it with me, seven, eight, nine uh, vertices per layer and three of those. So it's pretty close. Um, only issue is it's a bit too uh, tall. So if I was to increase this to a four by four by four, um, it works, but it's still getting taller. So simple solution, take offset, change it to endpoints. This way, the line, no matter how many points make it up, no matter how many instances we have, it's limited spatially to some start and end point, being the origin and 0, 0, 0, 0001. So uh, now we can have a cube of any density. And you can see the higher we make this number, the more it looks like a filled in dense cube. So we've made a custom volumetric distribution. That's a um, CVD for you. Okay. Uh, at this point, let's save it. I'm going to call it. What am I going to call? I'm going to call it available on Patreon because once we're done with this, you don't need to make the nodes yourself. Just pay me money and I will send you the blend file that I taught you how to make for free. Does that sound like a good deal? Either way. So we've had we have a tiny node group. What does it do? It makes a volumetric distribution in this kind of cube sense. Maybe the only thing we want to do, especially since we're going to add more to this, is I'm just going to throw a ceiling function in here just so that four point whatever kind of gets rounded up to the next integer. Okay. What do we want to do with this? We want for each of these points, and again, we have this layer stack that really all we care about is the vertices, not the faces that make this up. Don't think about this as sheets of paper. Think about it as a uh, 
you know, cube worth full, full of points, right? We want to take this, and for each of these, we want to spawn a cube such that it's a cube made out of cubes. It needs to be the right size, which is actually not trivial, as you'd say in the pretentious world, uh, how to do that. So if I take this and I instance, so again, this is just a set of points, and I'm going to instance on each of these a cube, you're going to see what do we expect to happen, something like this. We get a bunch of cubes, but they're intersecting, and they're too big, right? So the solution is you take them, you make them smaller, but if you make them too small, there's gaps in between. So the question is, what size should this be so that they're barely touching, right? Like they're perfectly um, touching side by side, like you'd pack a U-Haul, right? You're moving away from your parents. You've had enough of their bullshit. They're, uh, they, they, they curfew you. They uh, tell you what to do. They uh, indoctrinate you with their religion, right? You're moving away. How are you going to pack that box? Well, uh, we need a function for that. And th it, it should be dependent on our resolution of our X cube thing, because as we make this more and more dense, you can see these gaps are getting tiny. At some point, they're going to start intersecting again, right? So it should be a function dependent on that. Well, it turns out it's not so complicated. If we take the 3 by 3 by 3 case, you can see we have kind of like two gaps here on the x-axis and also two gaps on the y and the z. So for three vertices, we have two gaps. If I was to make this four, you're going to notice now we have, if I erase this, uh, now we have one, two, three gaps. So it's kind of like we take the vertices, uh, we subtract one, and then we do something to it is the core idea. Okay, so let's take that. I'm going to take the uh, the number. I guess we should take the uh, rounded up version of the ceiling, right? We take it. We subtract by one. That kind of describes the distance we want because it says how many gaps we have. And then all we do is we take the reciprocal of this, one divided, one over. And uh, in the first time I recorded this, I, I swore by, my, by uh, both ass cheeks. I said there will be a reciprocal function in here. But I guess they must have removed it because it was here at some point. Either way. Uh, we take 1 divided by the thing. Why? Because we did the subtract 1 for the gaps. But uh, let's say we have 3 in this case. Then we have 2 gaps. I don't want each cube to have a size of 2. I want there to be 2 cubes in that space. It's kind of the opposite, right? So it should be a half, not 2. If there's uh, 3 gaps, I want each one to take up a third, right? It's an inverse relationship. So the idea here is you take this, you make this the size, and bam, if you look at the wireframe, they're perfectly touching, no matter what number we make this. So it's a cube of cubes, and we can change the resolution. Uh, one thing you're going to notice is the cube kind of gets smaller, and uh, it's actually a limiting process. It's going to get closer and closer and closer, like a limit in calculus to this shape of a 2 by 2 by 2 uh, cube, because uh, the limit of 1 over n as n goes to infinity 0. Don't worry about it. Point being, point being... Uh, no matter what number we pick here, no matter how dense it's going to be, they're still going to be perfectly kind of touching without intersecting, okay? So we have a cube of cubes. Okay, fine. But uh, we need a step beyond that. Some of these cubes should be subdivided. Like, if each of these is a, a unit, some of these should be by themselves a cube of cubes, right? So it's this recursive thing, and it needs to be random. So step one done. Now let's do the randomization. So, for example, you can say I can take the scale. It's made up of units, but if I was to do something like use a random value node, which is going to output 0 to 1, we connect it to scale, you can see these are actually their own objects. In fact, um, we do have some repetition here. Like, it's almost like there's a layer on the bottom, and that's getting copied. Why? Because that's literally how we set this up. Uh, so make sure to realize instances. So we turn this into fresh new geometry, so it's actually fully randomized. You can see each of these are their own units, and you can almost see how we do the scaling effect at this point. But what I want to do is, again, say some of these cubes divide again, which is a little complicated. Like, how do we do that and then be able to control the scale? Well, here's how we're going to do it. So with this random value node that's, again, assigning a number between 0 to 1 for each of these points for x cubed points, I'm going to filter them through a greater than, okay? So I'm going to see which of these random values are bigger, greater than 0.5. That's going to be roughly half of them. I know. How did I figure that one out? But not necessarily half of them, just on average. So half of these are just going to be cubes. And now for these missing spots, which we can make more obvious with shadow and cavity, for these missing spots, I want these cubes to be further subdivided. So we need to kind of create a separate chain here. So for the rest of these points, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a delete geometry. Why? 
because the points that uh, lived through this greater than process, each of those got a cube. What I want to do is look at the opposite, the other ones that didn't make it. So if we take this and delete the ones, we delete the geometry uh, that did make the cut. So again, again, what are we doing here? Uh, I guess, uh, by the way, maybe one way to look at this is maybe we shouldn't set this to scale, but we just make it a selection. Because what we had before, it will look the same. Or will look the same. What we had before is the cubes that didn't make it get scaled to zero. Here I'm saying don't even instance them. So again, let's start fresh. What are we doing here? I'm saying make a selection of points. Half, Roughly half of them are going to be selected. For those, spawn a cube on each of them. For the ones that don't make the cut, I want to get rid of the ones that did. So now we are looking at the opposite. And then we want to do something to that. So I can actually join these geometries. And we can see we get this kind of edge. And we get kind of a face somewhere. We have kind of the yin and yang, right? So what do I want to do with the cubes that didn't make it? Um, well, we want them to be a cube of cubes, right? Further subdivided recursively. So uh, in this case, I'm going to do a two by two by two. You could try three by three by three and make uh, variations of, the, of this. I'm just going to keep it super simple. So to make each of these spawn, not a cube like before, but a two by two by two, it's a bit more complicated. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to instance, because again, we want to copy on each of these like didn't make it vertices. It's not it's not like a cube, right? Because we want to keep a cube of cubes. What am I even saying? So we can connect this. So you can see each of these uh, kind of dead vertices now has a cube. Uh, we can use this uh, sizing function like before to make it happen. But again, cube of cubes. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take our like function for scaling and divide by two, which is going to kind of seem like a weird move. So when I uh, look at these, kind of the two possibilities that could have happened after we bifurcated this, right? Uh, when I look at these, we have the normal ones and the ones that didn't make it are kind of half the size. The reason I divided it by two is I don't want you to think of these uh, small ones as cubes. Again, I want you to think of it as a distribution, just like before. So now we have, uh, it's really hard to tell. Let me look at it like this. So for each of these now, we have its own two by two by two distribution. So for each of these, if I can now spawn another cube, so I know basically this whole thing is just instance to points all the way down. If we can do that, then we'll have a two by two by two. So let me just show what I'm talking about and then maybe you'll understand it. So for each of these, I'm going to instance on those new points, the same divided by two cube. So you can see, it's not just cubes, it's like subdivided cubes we have now. Each of these is made up of a two by two by two kind of unit, okay? So we have this and the opposite, right? But the opposite is further subdivided, is the point. So if we join these, it will look like a full cube, but the key insight here is we can scale the normal ones or we can scale these special ones that further subdivide down. So. That's the key takeaway here. Uh, if you don't understand it, play that back over and over and over again. It's not my fault for being a bad teacher. It's your fault because that's easier on me. Um, but again, the idea here is we're doing this weird kind of instancing trick to be able to make a two by two by two. You can do the same thing for a three by three by three. It's a little bit harder, but it's the same kind of layering process as before. So now all we have to do, right, is we have one scale slider that does that and one that does the other thing. We need to somehow control these together uh, to create the effect. Like that's it. And again, I just want to emphasize fully procedural. So I can bump this number up and we still have this kind of normal ones and the um or i mean the subdivided ones and the opposite normal ones right we can make it any resolution so to make the animation what i want to do is i want to have a transition as we move downwards but i want it to kind of look a bit more cool than that so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to look at the distance of these points that are have cubes instanced on them and i want to compare them their distance to some object. So what do I mean by this? Let's say we have a sphere kind of hovering above this. So I want you to imagine there's a sphere up here. I want to just look at the proximity because this is a proximity based effect. How close am I to some geometry? I want to look at the proximity uh, to this, I guess, smaller radius sphere. And this uh, distance away is, by the way, let's uh, just compare it to the points of the sphere. It doesn't really matter, but whatever. Uh, this distance away is what's going to control the scaling. So I connected it there and I connect it here. So that uh, when I change the sphere, you can see it's doing something, 
Not very clear what it's doing, but it's definitely affecting both of these. If I had to translate, and now I can move the sphere up and down, you can see it's very off, but we kind of have the idea that it's just kind of scaling to the wrong numbers, okay? So again, what's happening here, uh, probably easier to demonstrate it with the actual sphere. Uh, we have a sphere, you can see it's right here, and it's a location matters because we're looking at the proximity to each of these points. As it gets very far away, the distance grows, and as the distance grows, so does the scale because they're linearly related, and that's one of the things we need to fix. So all we need to do at this point is basically kind of remap what this distance does because right now it just it's going raw into both of these scales. So we just need to do a bit of math, and that should make it look good. So I'm going to start with the sphere above, as you can see. Uh, issue being the cubes are going to start getting too big because the distance is bigger than one, but whatever. I'm going to take this and I'm going to filter it. So now we're going to get something we like. I'm going to do a map range uh, already because this is set to clamp. It's not going to let anything be bigger than one or less than zero. So you can already see, kind of looks good, but I'm going to make it look way better. So smoother step. That's the first thing you're going to do. And does this already have clamping? It seems like it does. Okay. Smoother step just makes it kind of a smoother uh, transition instead of as it gets twice as close, make the effect twice as strong. It's more of a, a curve, a bell curve of some kind, right? So you can see it's already kind of working, but it's not scaling tiny enough. So what we need to do is we need to mess with these numbers. So these first two are going to be what distances are we looking at? Well, we're looking at distances from 0 to 1. I want to increase that. So maybe look from 0 to 2. So it has kind of a further reaching effect. And then the second one is saying, what should we output to? What, how is this going to affect the scale? Well, let's see. We move this up and down. As it's about here, we should really start seeing some cubes disappearing, not just getting small, but disappearing. So I want to take the scale and bring it negative, like really tiny. Okay, so I made another mistake. Uh, so luckily I caught this one, so I wouldn't have to remake the tutorial. So we were talking about what numbers should we set this to, what's kind of the uh, fall off of this, all, uh, all of that kind of stuff. So I probably changed these numbers a bit since last I cut. Um, the thing is, no matter what numbers you pick, you're going to notice it kind of looks off. Why? Because some of these cubes are doing the correct thing, but then the subdivided cubes, they all kind of shrink together at the same time. And I'm like, why is that happening? Well, it's because we don't have actual geometry to compare the proximity to. So just like I was talking about before, sometimes you got to realize those instances and boom, just like that, we get something that looks a million times better. So let's see. Yeah, now you can really see what this is doing. So now we can actually pick better numbers. So I think what I was saying is this is kind of the distance, the fall off. So you want something kind of gentle but not too gentle so that it doesn't like work. So you can see this is a bit too gentle because the corners aren't reached because those are the furthest away points. So just kind of pick the smallest number that would technically work. So it really uh, does have this kind of caving in kind of look, which I think looks good. Although we do have the issue with the top, but we'll fix that. So that's one thing. And then the other is how much and how fast uh, should it shrink. And that's kind of like a, personal preference. I think this is like a bit too strong. So I'm going to kind of elect for something like that. But uh, to compensate, we, we increase the distance. So basically, it's a it's it's a, it's a tug of war almost because one thing kind of affects the other and you want to make sure. Yeah, so you can see right here, they, they don't get tiny enough. So we got to make them even tinier. We want to make sure there's a point where you can't see any of them. It's a tug of war. But uh, you can see this is generally the effect where we have cubes uh, getting smaller, but also the subdivided uh, version of that. No, no better way to end a tutorial than with a voice crack. It really says, I've uh, given you knowledge with confidence. Either way, though, I, at this point, really all it is is it's keyframing this ball moving up and down. In fact, you probably don't even want to see it. That was just for demonstration purposes. You want to keyframe this as Z slider. And stuff like that, maybe set up some basic lighting. Um, but at this point, I think uh, I've, I've given you the info. So uh, this tutorial, by the way, is sponsored by Concierge Render, which is a render farm for Blender, which we can use to render this thing a bit faster. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and kind of make it into a nice scene. And I will talk about how we can get faster render times with the sponsor of this video, Concierge Render. Okay, so I basically just took our scene and just kind of put some lighting on it, you know, made a background, stuff like this. So again, the core geometry nodes thing has not changed. I just made it look good. So 
Again, something like this might take a long time to render, especially if your computer isn't good, but even on mine, which is a monster, by the way, the thing has a, a 3080, so I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, but even on that, uh, you can't even render that fast, especially if you have a lot of frames. So render farms a, are a direct uh, solution to that and concierge render direct solution. So how do we set this up? Well, first of all, make sure you're happy with your blend file. Your camera's in the right place, your keyframes are keyframed, stuff like that. And then we just got to pick our like output settings and stuff like this. So for example, uh, how many samples do I want? For example, stuff like this is important. So I'm going to set this directly in the blend file and concierge render can read that, but we can also change it later. So it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to say 400 samples cycles and uh, 1080 by 1080. So I want it in a one by one square. Um, in my case, PNG, all that's fine. 75 frames, pick these settings uh, earlier rather than later. So now in concierge render, uh, go to the website, concierge-render.com. Make an account if you don't. You're going to get $5 in free render credits. In my case, I should have more than that, but a project like this should be under a dollar. Anyways, $5 is actually quite a bit. So make an account, log in. I'm going to log into mine. And I have, no, I don't even have $10. I'm a poor boy, 987. Either way, here's how we uh, use this interface. Go to upload and launch renders. You're going to upload your blend file. So again, we're uploading the blend file so it can render, and then we're going to download the render. That's the core idea here. Uh, the, the key idea is that it renders faster than you would have been able to. So we want the four concierge blocks dot blend. In this case, it should be a 3.0 file, I think is the way I did it, but it can recognize it anyway. So four concierge uh, blocks, it's right there. I guess it's alphabetical order. Take this, actions, launch render. It's going to think about it. And what it's actually going to do is it's analyzing this is it's going to look at any resolution, any uh, frame rates, any whatever. And it's going to import those settings in. And then we can modify them if we want to. But I don't. So I'm just going to wait for this uh, to pop up. Our window has popped up. Let's see if we need to change anything. Probably not, though. Um, okay, render platform. It knows it's Blender 3.0. If for some reason it's wrong, just select the Blender version you want. In this case, 3.0 is fine. It knows we're in cycles. It knows we have an animation, not just a single image, but we're rendering like 75 frames or something. In frames and resolution, yes, 1 through 75. It has our 1080 by 1080. Camera, 400 samples. It's imported this all in. But again, if you want to, you could just change the samples from here, and it will render with that new sample count. Lastly, Go to hardware. This is the last decision you got to make. I don't even make a decision here, but you could. Uh, this is the part where you get to pick uh, how good or how fast. Same thing. How fast of hardware do you want to render this? Do you want to go like bonkers uh, with this? Your boss is breathing over you. You can smell the mint Tic Tacs and he's like, you have five minutes. Render this. Um, then you can pick the uh, faster thing. So uh, of course, the more intense the hardware, the slightly more expensive it's going to be. Every single project I've ever rendered with Concierge Render, I think, has been with the basic. I've made a short film with this. It's worked fine for me. So I'm just going to do this. Hit render. It's going to be in the queue. Go to job manager, and then we can actually see it happen. So four concierge blocks, view details, and you're going to see the 75 frames. And what's going to happen is it's going to render a lot of these in parallel, which is a big reason of why it can render faster than your computer. And you're going to see uh, these frames are going to start popping up and then they're going to populate down here. And then we can here. There's 11 of them. It went, you didn't go from zero to one. It went from zero to 11. Either way, it's going to render these and then we'll see that it rendered correctly. And also uh, how much time did it take? So I'll be right back. The render is complete. I don't think it's an exaggeration to take, to say that that took like a minute might've been 61 seconds. I don't know, but either way, all 75 frames completed. You can see it took half a dollar. Well, two cents more. I'm lying to you. It was 52 cents. But um, less than a dollar to do a 75-frame uh, uh, animation at a fairly high quality and all this. So you can see $5 uh, when you make an account is actually like, usable. Like You can use it for a couple projects. But uh, you get to see how long did it take, how much did it cost, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but more importantly, let's check the frames. So the thing goes down. The blocks are starting to get smaller. So frame 15, we should see something. Yep. That looks correct. Let's check somewhere deeper into the animation. Should be further down. Yep. Okay. So you can download these frames or hit download outputs. It's going to put them in a zip. It's an image sequence of PNGs in this case because that's what I picked. And uh, yeah, Concierge Render. Check it out if you are using Blender and want to render faster uh, for fairly cheap. So hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial and um, yeah.